Hello and welcome, friends. Happy Tuesday. So I am uh, kicking off a very impromptu live session with all of you because I just realized this morning we are going to be welcoming our 250,000th subscriber to our natural nation here. And so I'm very excited to have a live session as we count down because this is such a monumental moment. And I literally am in studio filming. But welcome everybody, the live chat is enabled and I'd love to hear where all of you are tuning in from. And to help us count down, please share this on your social sites, bring them into the fold here as we celebrate our 250,000th member. It's so crazy to think that we have grown to this point. Oh my gosh, and it just happened. <sighs> Somehow we just surpassed it literally just in that second. So I'm doing a quick screenshot and I'm very, very excited. So welcome to our 200, 250,000 and 250,001 uh, new subscribers. Welcome everybody. So I just want to do a quick, quick kind of um, little detail for uh, many of you. I know that a lot of folks had tons and tons of questions, lots of feedback about a recent video that I posted about vitamin E. And I will be clarifying further because obviously I didn't get as specific as I think it was necessary for all of you. I want to make sure I'm giving you all the best information. And I've actually been in contact with Dr. Tan and am arranging hopefully for a whole bunch of really, really powerful information um, straight from the scientist's mouth. So welcome. Hi, sis. Hi, Gloria. Hi, Vicki. Hi, Donna. Hi, Deborah. Stephanie. Jeannie. Where are you guys all tuning in from? Tell me. Let's, let, let me know. Um, let's see, Eva, Deb, hi Deb, hi Lois, Tamanasi, I hope I'm saying that, uh, Jeannie, yay, so this is really exciting, um, this has been such a labor of love, this channel, and um, I definitely feel very honored to be a part of um, our, our natural health resources here, and uh, I never would have thought that back in July of 2014, when a patient said, get on YouTube, you would you teach and you do the circuit of teaching and educating and this is like a whole new forum and literally it's life changing. So I'm sorry, one of my peonies, I have a peony bouquet. I'll have to show you, I got this from Trader Joe's. So I love peonies and so I've got that in my office. But I wanna share with you two things um, and then I actually have to run and grab Gabriel because I'm uh, doing mom duty. But this is a really good book. I'll include a link when I get back and kind of wrap up with um, the details in this video, but the truth about vitamin E, this is a doctor that has done significant research on both tocopherols, and there are multiple forms, but also the tocotrienol. He actually was um, the, the founder um, of this particular ingredient and assessed um, and has National Institute of Health uh, backing. And so it's really exciting. So I reference that as well. Um, so, hey, let's see, we've got Marla and Kathleen and Douglas and Kelly and Julie. It's so great to see all of you. I'm so, so proud of um, everybody's communication and input and it's so wonderful. So thank you. Um, so I wanted to give you guys that little tidbit of info. And then today, I just want to give you some quick housekeeping. Today, if you guys are on the hunt for stocking stuffer gift ideas, I have that video coming out today. Tomorrow will be um, a, a women and probiotic specific video. That's been a really popular topic. And so I've got that coming. And then also for men, because we do have a very large male community, uh, we have videos specific to male um, pattern balding, hair loss for men, DHT blocking. This also is applicable for women. So we have a lot of good, good stuff coming out. Uh, let's see, Kelly is from New Brunswick, Canada, and Julie's down up in Ohio with Lyme disease and POTS. Um, so I actually have intentions of uh, creating a POTS-specific video. Actually, one of my videographers has POTS, and she's had some crazy experiences more recently about that. Hey, Ed, oh, you're in my neighborhood way back at home. Um, I am in. grew up in St. Pete, so... Um, hello, am I, and was Licky. I'm using my laptop, so it's harder to see here, but I'm so excited. So we totally did welcome our 250,000th subscriber, which is really exciting. And I'm so, so happy to have 
such a wonderful community. It's been really kind of crazy with YouTube, but I am very encouraged by all your comments. Please keep them coming. I actually do read almost all of your comments. Um, sometimes it's on my desktop, which doesn't always articulate comments. It's just whoever comments on. Now we almost have 400 videos that I've created for all of you. So if you haven't gone through some of my playlists, please do so. There's probably a lot of good content that maybe you've missed if you're a new subscriber or um, th there have been recent changes with the notifications. I know somebody commented um, on that. And that is, I know that's really challenging and frustrating and can be um, something that uh, the notification bell, like you actually have to do two steps. So you have to be notified on all items. So YouTube's making it a little bit more challenging for you guys to get my content. And then the censorship's like a whole nother dilemma all to its own. So CBD we've tabled um, and won't be producing any content until it becomes fully federally legal. Um, and we just felt that you guys and our relationship and the content that I also can deliver apart from that topic is too valuable to jeopardize it for um, a particular product. So Hey Brian, we hit 250,000 subscribers. Yeah. Yay. And we have, uh, we had in the time of me going live, I think we had like six people. So I'm going, I'm live to them. Do you want to come say hi? So Brian had a migraine. So he came, he came home early. Say hi to everybody. Hi. hi. Congratulations. Hey. Thank you. I'll get great Gabriel in a minute. Okay. Oh, you are? Oh, thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So guess what? I don't have mom duty. So I'm going to give you a whole bunch of good info. Thanks, Brian. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a question and answer session. Um, and I actually, in my Vlogmas uh, or healthy gift guide, I shot in a studio setting. Um, I had three sections of a Q&A from all of you. I pulled all of you on the community tab and like, okay, you guys, I want to answer all your questions. And the first, so there are three segments of the video. The first segment had audio. Um, and sometimes my card space runs out or I had to change battery, whatever happened. And I lost, hey, guys, and I have a question. Sorry, you guys are catching me in my home studio. Okay, hi. So this is Daisy. She's the crazy girl. I have a story about Daisy. She injured my puppy um, and my finger. Um, so, okay. So anyway, so let's do Q&A. &A. I, will, I will answer all your questions. Oh, the dog's in here. Here's Nina. Um, okay. So the story, long and short, is that I uh, only got 10 minutes of Q&A, which basically was like three questions that you guys had. So I feel like I shorted you all, and I definitely want to redo that content. Um, okay, so um, uh, sis, and love your channel. I'm so glad I found you. Yay, me too. Hi, Pop. Um, all right, so Isabel, hello. I'd like to know where you live and how long you've been working on your YouTube channel and following you for the last month. Very beautiful channel. Oh, thank you. Okay, so I live in Atlanta, Georgia, actually a northern, northwestern suburb. And I started my YouTube channel in July of 2014 at the um, very persistent requesting uh, from a patient who her trainer was a YouTuber. And he had just hit like a million subscribers or something really crazy. And she said, look, he drops F-bombs and is not polished. And you are so educated. And at the time I was speaking, um, I was on a speaker circuit in the area regionally talking to um, a lot of folks about um, kind of baby boomer health um, challenges. And so it took her like three months of really, really um, pushing. And so I started to look into it. And essentially, I started the channel and I'm actually doing montage. Um, so I'm pulling some of the early videos like I did not know what I was doing. I still this is not my forte by any means. I'm the least technical person and Brian and all my friends can attest. I don't read instructions. So like if I buy a piece of equipment, even my phone, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know how to use it. I have zero patience for technology. I hate it. It's just a fact of life and a necessity. But it's not my friend. So, but the good news is that it allows me to come to you guys in a live format. And it's just, it's just really exciting. So I could not be more grateful because when we moved to Atlanta, it's now two and a half years ago, um, it was a major change. And like, we're talking 
in March, February and March, it was it was really late February, early March, Brian's company said, um, we want to bring you up for an interview, him, um, to the Atlanta area. So that's where his company's headquarters is, headquarters are. And they basically offered him a new job, a new position in the company. And um, eight, eight days later, he left us. Like he packed up his car and moved to Atlanta. Meanwhile, I had a year and a half, you know, we had Gabriel, he was a year and a half old. Yeah, he was, not, yeah, about a year and a half old. And um, I had a practice that I was still part time, um, but my clinic was there. And so it took us some time to transition, but in that transition, Isabel, I'm really long winded. I'm sorry. Um, I we got to Atlanta, and it, this is a big metropolis, and there's a lot of driving, and traffic is insane. And I spent time in Boston. I did schooling up there and worked up there, and that that killed my whole desire to be driving. So in Tampa and St. Pete, I was always less than ten minutes door to door from my home to my clinic, and um, here. 10 miles away can take you like an hour and a half, depending on in the morning. And so I didn't know the area and figured, well, maybe we'll get settled and then I'll see kind of what I want to do professionally. And that's where the YouTube channel really kind of was my time and focus investment. After three months, I was kind of bored with decorating and unboxing and trying to get connected here and um, just started to educate myself. on So YouTube videoing and all that stuff. So I, it's been quite a journey. So hi, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle. Hey, you caught me live. Did you see, I gave you a shout out in the video the other day. I think it's live. I don't know. I feel like I've edited so many videos. I can't remember which ones are live and are not. Um, Deb, you received your happy breast balm and dry skin. Yay. Happy breast balm. It's great. And usually I have it on my skin. Um, happy breast balm. You guys aren't familiar with it. It's seriously one of the best. I call it a skin nutraceutical. That's like where you can use good quality nutrients. And because of our skin has density and, and, and absorption of nutrients, you can actually deliver really good, powerful nutrients to heal your body. So for women and men who have any breast challenges, tenderness, um, swelling, fibrotic tissue, fibrosis, you know, cysts and, and fibroids in the breast. And it's also great for other areas. So sometimes I'll use it as a deodorant. I know that it's not meant to be that way, but the properties in it, it's good. It's got the magnesium. It has frankincense, which is fantastic. Okay. So MI has a question and ask, ask away friends, ask your questions. Brian's picking Gabriel up so I don't have to run. Um, Turmeric, dry versus fresh. That's an excellent question. I have found that fresh sometimes is hard to find. Um, our local sprouts is our go-to and it's not always organic. Um, and root vegetables, I always wanna go organic because the root vegetables are in the soil and they're absorbing. They're just, it's like they're sponges. And so if they're being grown in uh, non-organic pesticide rich soils, I'm sorry, Daisy's right over here. So I'm, I'm just rubbing her. Um, that can be a toxin. So if I can't get turmeric fresh in an organic form, then I go to a dry form. Um, I've highlighted uh, several different products that I use, like the golden milk tea um, that has dried turmeric in it, and it's so fantastic. Oh, my mic is muffled. Okay. You know what? I actually hope, oh, hold on. My mic is let me find out why. Hold on. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm sorry, you guys. It's right here. <sighs> Crazy. So that's like, that's technology for you. So I have two mics. I'm actually shooting in my normal setup over there. If I could turn this around, I would. And so I apologize. Is that better? Um, hopefully. Oh my God. That's horrible. So the good news is I do. So the progression of my YouTubing, I didn't have any mics and I actually worked off of a phone like the iPhone four and I would do all of the wrong things. Like you couldn't hear me and what was crazy. And this is what I thought was interesting. I'm still decorating my office. Um, what is interesting is that um, some of those really horrible videos were really popular videos. And so I'm, I've progressed, but 
what I want to tell you is I have now really good um, equipment um, that is it works even when I forget to plug in. So, okay. Um, and I, I, I did dip this in my tea. Oh, speaking of, have I told you guys about my new tea? I don't know if you can see it. Okay, so again, I've got some stuff here and some stuff in the kitchen. Um, okay, so there's a new tea that I found. I don't know how new it is, but it has two awesome adaptogenic herbs called chaga, and it has cordyceps. cordyceps. And it's by Republic of Tea, and they come in these little tea bags. And oh my gosh, it's a beautiful flavor. And it's kind of this golden color. Mm. It's great. I found that at our local Sprouts and was very excited. I don't remember if I include, in, in, I didn't, you know what? I haven't edited that. I did a Sprouts haul and then um, I've been kind of editing it. The video, the lighting's horrible. Um, okay, so uh, obvious, obvious, I'm sorry, on Sonia. Please enlighten me on progesterone cream, please. The best from the ones you spoke about. Thanks. Okay. So not all progesterone is created equally. Um, progesterone can be derived from a multitude of sources. And this is a big question in yesterday's video. If you guys didn't see it, um, I posted, it was called the most important hormone all women need. And um, that particular uh, video, I highlight two creams that I have more recently been using. Source Naturals was the first one and it is derived from soy. And I got a lot of people freaking out about the soy derivative. And so I want to kind of clarify. And then the other one um, was um, a, a derivative from wild yam. So soy, there are good soys and, and bad soys. So not all soy is bad and not all soy is good. Um, GMO soy, non-organic, very conventionally farmed soy is not the version that you want to have it extracted. There are some brands that will use GMO, GMO soy, um, and we can have challenges with that. These are soy and wild yam and plants are phytohormones. They produce phytohormones. And when we consume them, they're almost like a bioidentical. Some work better for some people than others. And so you sometimes have to experiment and see. So my, what might work for me or for, let's say, Kelly or Michelle or Gloria uh, might not work for Isabel and Vicky. So it, it kind of depends. And you, you want to test out and see. Um, I will tell you that when you begin using progesterone, and, and I always first got to clarify, make sure you do get testing, make sure you quantify where are your levels for the most part, part um, and this is kind of the average, but for the most part, a lot of women are in a deficient state. So you just kind of have to figure out, okay, how deficient am I? Because that might clarify, do you use it all month long? Do you use it twice a day or once a day? Do you use it on day 15 to day 28 of your cycle or non-cycle? Because I actually have menopausal women still consuming progesterone during the later, the latter phase of their menstrual cycle, even though they're not cycling. Same with women that might have hysterectomies, partial hysterectomies, full hysterectomies. Progesterone is a crucial hormone and it's a life-changing hormone. I actually had several women confirm it in comments, which I always love because it's not just me talking head confirming it. Um, so, so going back to like the derivative, you just have to kind of know and do your label reading. Um, and this is something also going back to that vitamin E video. Um, and, and I had, I mean, that video has blown up. Um, I checked last time we were at uh, 152,000 people have watched this video four days. I mean, it's insane. I'm happy to be able to impart all that information. I did not do the best job of getting really detailed um, because I toe the line of like, how detailed do I get? Do I get really scientific with you? There are people that want it. And then there are people that tell me I talk too much. <laughs> so, so I try and kind of balance my style with the delivery. I will be, be doing a follow-up, but to that commentary, um, there are a lot of people that were like, okay, well, I'm trying to find, you know, I'm reading the label in the spot in the thing. And it says, you know, mixed to cofrols. Well, what did that, what does that mean? Or, oh, it has D dash alpha cofrol or whatever. The problem that we have, just like with skincare and even everyday use items, home care products, um, 
is that we, hey, Richard, hi, John, welcome, all of you, Brett, it's great to see you guys, Robert, I love all the men representing, woo -hoo. there's a video for you guys coming out soon, so promise, actually, um, this isn't it, but this brand, I'm going to be talking about the male, male hair stuff, okay, so um, one of the things that we have a problem with is that there are no labeling laws on any of the supplements. I mean, this is from like probiotics to, you know, like suppo vaginal suppositories, video coming out on that to, you know, I'm just pulling stuff that's on my desk here. Uh, toothpaste, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, guys. <clears throat> There's no labeling requirement. And so they can choose to say fragrance and we don't know what the fragrance is. They can choose to say to go for all and not identify. Is it the synthetic version? They could say soy in a product, but we don't know the soy. So a lot of times you have to do digging. So I always recommend, and I've been commenting a lot on all of those folks because I don't want them to think that I'm not tuned into their questions. Um, I've been commenting like you have to, you have to read your label. You might have to go to the manufacturer's website and even call customer service. Like I was on the phone. I, I, this is, this is my life. Like I literally am sleuthy and I will call a company, I call a brand. Now I just Instagram them. So I'm like, Hey, curious. I bought something or saw something curious about this label. It wasn't clear. Um, and often I'll just say, Hey, I recommend a lot of products and you might want to be a little bit clearer. Um, but the reality is that you have to, you have to do your own digging. Um, and it, it becomes it, it seriously, it's a pain in the butt, but that's the reality of the world we live in. So Richard's from New York. Yay. How is it? Is it uh, raining or snowing up there? I just saw something happen in New Jersey, too. Hopefully you're not too close to that. Um, Rajuta. Hi, doctor. Please help me. How do I increase my progesterone naturally? I'm in my seventh week of pregnancy and my progesterone level is eight. OK, so this is the only time where I will say you want to do food, cream, and you want to get your doctor to give you a supplement. So ask for, and this is seriously, I did this with Gabriel because I was like, we are going to get past this first trimester. Um, there are no rainbow babies, or I don't want to have that situation where we have a miscarriage or not carry it. Knowing I have PCOS and progesterone deficiency is always a factor. I um, ate a lot of wild yam. I did the progesterone cream. I also limited a lot of my estrogen, like phytoestrogens. Um, so I really got honed in on the foods that I was consuming, but also I made sure to get a progesterone uh, supplement. I, I want to say it was like 200 milligrams and they only give it to you for like a month or two. Like it's not a hefty script, but it does help kind of elevate. Um, then I really feel like that really helps a lot of women. I, I really feel like we could have, um, and again, I'm not speaking from a scientific background, right? Or not background, but like scientifically, like I'm not quoting data right now or science um, in terms of clinical research. But I feel like what I see in my clinic is that if women, if we did have greater emphasis on supporting our progesterone levels, because we generally have a progesterone deficiency and depending on the type of pregnant early pregnancy, um, you have like, it's not uncommon for women to have, you know, where they're vomiting and they've got morning sickness and then you're fatigued. I mean, that all the stress that adds to some of the depletion. So you don't want to have a strain. So that's what I would recommend. But obviously talk with your doctor. Um, yes, Lorian levels definitely must be tested. Plant spirit 92. Lentils are very high in protein. Um, Annie ever after. Oh, you're welcome. I'm just reading your comments. I love it. Um, okay, so I want to make sure, uh, Brett, oh, thank you. All right, so let's see here. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see, I want to answer all your questions. So ask me some questions, friends, if I haven't missed any, I'm just scrolling up. Um, so the, yeah, progesterone is a big one. And there are definitely, um, so I'll just say this. I have been shocked and blown away by some of the commentary on that video from yesterday. Um, it was yesterday. <laughs> it's been, oh, it's been quite a December. Um, women have to literally haggle to get their OBGYNs to run labs. And I want to read, this is just, it's so infuriating to me. I want to read this one comment. Okay. Um, okay. So this, 
just tears me up. This is so wrong on so many different levels. Um, this is one fr fly freely said, I asked the GYN to test for hormonal levels. She offered me birth control and got upset when I questioned her about my symptoms. They had no idea what I needed and they don't listen. They're only interested in office volume, not value. But this one um, comment really, I was so frustrated for her. Um, and what I'm seeing some as I find this, some commonalities in the commenters and even what I've experienced with my doctor is that you have to fight for your healthcare. You have to like come in armed and dangerous because they are seeing 40 to 60 people before noon. And you know, OBGYNs have also had clinical rounds at the hospital. She might have been doing early C sections in the morning because they now schedule all of that for their convenience. Um, uh, Sherry, I'm going to answer your question. What about what should my progesterone level be? I'm 56. That is a moving number. Um, and it depends on when you have your hormones tested, what time, and you know, if, if you're cycling, you know, there's a lot of variables at play, but we do have a range you want, you know, before ovulation, during ovulation, after ovulation ranges. And then we see, um, the variants for women at different ages as well, but the, it, it is specific. And so it's not like if I were to choose a number 13 that you're going to be at or need to be at 13 all month long. It just doesn't work that way. But you do want your levels to start to increase at a certain time of the month, typically right at ovulation or right before. Um, okay. So I do, I really feel like we need to, I want to communicate this one comment. I have so many comments. Okay. Um, okay, here we are. Monica Perez. She's like all of us friends. First of all, your doctor, your videos have been so helpful. And okay. So she was very sweet. She said, what should I do if my OBGYN refuses to test my hormone levels? I have PCOS. I, I have it. Anybody else have it in, in this, um, live I have PCOS and I'm really struggling to find balance. And I feel like part of it is because I don't even know where to start. I feel you. I feel her feel her frustration. She says that our hormones vary throughout the day and that there's no point in checking progesterone, estrogen, and testosterone. I feel like I've been going in circles for years. Seriously, uh, while that is true, as I, I referenced to uh, Sherry, I hope I'm saying your name right, Walter. Um, they do vary throughout the day. Th it's not necessarily do they vary throughout the day. Cortisol varies throughout the day. They vary throughout the month. Now, testosterone, mm, you're not going to see a lot of variants. Estrogen, there are three types of estrogens, and some you will see um, vary more greatly than others. But can you believe that? Like, that just really, I mean, it boils my blood. So, um, you know, I said it was shameful, negligent, and should be malpractice for a doc who specializes in female reproduction to refuse to test. So here's the other thing. We can fire our doctors. Like you are not obligated to see them. I know we do have restraints with our insurance, Medicare, Medicaid, whatever, but they're not traditionally, they're not the only ones. Now I know OBGYN um, and, and just female wellness care does vary. Like in Georgia, I was shocked to learn that there's almost, I think close to 80 counties that there, there is no maternity care or women's wellness care. That's insane. So if that fall, if you fall into that boat, what that means is you've got a DO who's probably been paid to go to school and to serve the community. Um, maybe they're like a jack of all trades, but not a specialist in hormones. They're seeing, you know, they, they've got a laceration to maybe like a dog bite to somebody who's pregnant, to somebody who has osteoarthritis, to somebody who has rheumatoid arthritis, to lupus, to like stomach bug. So you see like they're not like honed in doing this all the time. But then if we are seeing specialists and that's all they do, they should be testing. Um, one of my OBGYNs back at home that I was seeing just regularly for women care because I didn't need to have kind of specialization. But once I got pregnant, I was like, I'm not, you're not my, my girl, you know, you can handle my paps and all the other stuff, but like, I am going to find somebody else. And we went into mid midwife care, but her focus was working with women after menopause and she was doing bladder reconstruction. And then she started to do 
plastic surgery in the nether regions and was doing injections and lasers. That was her focus. Um, you know, it, but she also was pro surgery big time. Um, okay. So let me answer your questions. Okay. I love this. I'm so excited. You guys, I'm excited. I've got time um, to <laughs> chat. Okay. So Annie ever after, do you have any suggestions on the types of tests we should ask our functional medical doctors for that can give a good baseline when you don't feel like anything specifically needs addressed? That's a really good question. I think for sure, you should always have your adrenal glands tested. Um, so you want to test for cortisol, four panel saliva, not uh, blood, not serum. So cortisol, DHEA. Um, women, I really do feel like we should have an assessment of progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, DHEA. That is a, an adrenal based um, steroidal hormone. DHEA levels can also give us some indication when they're low, can give us some indication of neurotransmitter imbalances. So there's a direct correlation between our adrenals and our neurotransmitter health. That's all the central nervous system, our happy, healthy, like mental kind of um, status. And Daisy's coming to say, hi, come here, Daisy. Come here, pup. Um, so that and also... Um, I think, you know, a CBC panel once a year, you want to make sure you're analyzing your uh, cholesterol levels, enzyme levels with your liver, red blood cell, white blood cell counts, um, white blood cell counts that are skewed can tell us a little bit about any autoimmune disorders or dysfunction, anything that your body might be fighting, you know, autoimmunity attack also with red blood cells. And this is something I have not done video on comment, let me know. Um, oh, and by the way, super chat is on. So I always forget to say that if you guys want to uh, super chat me, um, I always am grateful for that. Um, so I, I want to do this video. It probably won't happen during the month of Vlogmas, but I want to talk about what your red blood cell counts mean when they are elevated and you may have anemia. Um, there is a big link to, and I don't have any CBC labs right in front of me that I could pull, but um, there's a, a, a direct link between when somebody has like high ferritin levels and yet they're running really low energy. Maybe they have fibroids. Um, they are definitely categorically clinically in an anemic state that we actually see when we do MTHFR testing, there's like a methylation issue. And so I do want to highlight that. Um, so I hope I answered that, Annie. I always kind of digress. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, okay. Christy, hi from North Carolina. What are the best supplements to take for autoimmune issues? I've seen so many different suggestions that it's overwhelming. I totally get it. So just globally, autoimmunity, you want to lower inflammation. So the anti-inflammatories, food first, come here, Daisy. Food first, come here, puppy. Food, food is always where I go to, like turmeric, come here, puppy. Ginger. Um, quercetin, CoQ10, um, chaga. I love chaga. Um, that's actually what this tea that I'm drinking is. So chaga, you can get in a tea form, capsule form, liquid herbals. Host Defense is one of my favorite brands for, for, for chaga specifically, just the way they source it. Um, chaga has the, the highest, most abundant antioxidant value, the auric scale is the highest on the auric scale of any natural occurring substance, better than alpha lipoic acid or CoQ10, which all, those two are really powerful. So I would for sure go with chaga. Now, side note, chaga gets lumped into the mushroom category. It It isn't a mushroom. It's not like a fungi or fungus, but it's somewhere in the middle. Um, but it, it it is this uh, live organism that grows on a particular type of Siberian um, tree. And, and it's not an oak tree. I can't remember the name of the tree, but chaga is phenomenal. Like the European, Russian, Asian research on chaga, it's hands down a supplement I think we should all be taking. I, I'm not um, taking massive quantities of it, but I drink a tea and I have an herbal supplement that's kind of immune kind of global boosting with mushrooms. And it happens to be in some of the powders and things that I take. 
Um, but definitely I look at chaga, turmeric, ginger, quercetin, uh, CoQ10. I think those are good. Um, and then there's just, there's so many levels, but Christy, and, and for any of you who deal with inflammation uh, challenges or autoimmunity, if we can lower your inflammation levels, you can really greatly improve some of the healing and some of the balancing of that whole autoimmune attack because inflammation really is the root of all illness and disease and disease progression. Um, Lorian, hi Lorian. Okay, she says, Annie, I have labs run every six months. That's great. Um, Natalie, hi, what are your views on the pill as birth control? So um, I'm varied. Uh, there have, there, there are a lot of birth controls from the time I was in school learning about the different birth control. There are just tons. Um, for some women, it's helpful, um, for like birth control, there are other ways that you can kind of naturally balance. Um, but I would say, um, uh, come here, Daisy. I would say that, um, seed cycling tends to be my go-to if you want an alternative, because you can naturally add in the plant-based uh, hormones through nuts and seeds. Jen, hi, good morning from Japan. Yay, where in Japan are you from? I'm so excited that you joined me. I lived in Tokyo for a year. I love Japan, so hi. Okay, Vicki Lynn, hey Vicki, fatty liver, but since listening to you, I need to have my progesterone tested but can you talk about B complex? It's good to repair the liver. Yeah, B complex is fantastic. And in fact, at 4:30, I'm getting my um, uh, B. I get a B shot every uh, week now, um, just to kind of manage some of the stress. I have a wedding I'm planning. Get Brian and I never had a wedding. Uh, we never, we never did the wedding thing. Um, but we're doing that. And so I've got that and craziness with mom life and business and videos and all you fabulous folks. So I'm pumping B like crazy. Um, I also do a liposomal B, um, pump and B vitamins are water soluble. Our body burns through them really fast, especially if we're, if we're dealing with any type of stressor. And I don't just want to say stress because stress, as we typically know it, is for sure going to burn through your bees. Uh, but generally what we find is that bee works best in, in the way bees are absorbed in the body is they're like their friends. I always kind of in my head, I just see all the little bees are like hey, happy friends and they all hold hands and they enter our body. So if you don't take a bee complex, you might not be able to truly absorb all Daisy, come on. Um, you might not be able to truly absorb that particular nutrient that you're focusing on, like a B12. You want, you know, the full complex and then add on uh, the, the bees. But bees, you want to take at least three times a day, morning, midday, and evening, and that can greatly improve your energy. Uh, definitely a lot of research that bees also help balance your adrenals, um, and that definitely is a video topic for sure. Hey, Anita. Robert, ah, uh, testosterone is low. Any suggestions other than doing heavy weight, uh, weighted exercises? Are there any foods or supplements or should I wait for the next stream? Okay, um, so testosterone, if testosterone is low, that generally means your cortisol is high and your body is converting. Um, so there's this whole synthesis. I actually have several videos on this. If you hit my men's health and my prostate health playlist, it goes really detailed, but essentially with a lot of my men, when we test them, I do male hormone, reproductive hormones plus cortisol <clears throat> and DHEA. And what we find is that low testosterone doesn't always mean that you're not producing it. What happens is your body's rearticulating that natural production uh, from your body. And there's an enzyme reaction um, that's converting literally your testosterone into estrogen. So I have a lot of men over the ages, it's now starting younger, but I'd say 55, 55 to 60 is when we start to see a lot of my male patients in an estrogen dominant state, low testosterone, low DHEA. Then they start to have not only belly weight gain, but they also have start to have the benign prostatitis and elevated PSA levels and prostate challenges. No, that's not, that's not for you puppy. Um, sorry, Daisy's smelling my my office. She never comes in here. Uh, let's see. Okay, so I hope that was helpful. Um, Janine, I really like 
would like for you to be my personal doctor. Is that possible? It's possible. Scheduling has been a little crazy. <laughs> and I actually have, I'm now um, a, a prime educator for Juzo. So I, I travel around. It's a lot that I'm traveling and teaching. And right now, the springtime, we already have like the scheduling slotted. So I don't know how open my schedule is. So I don't want to make any promises, but we're trying to work out scheduling. So stay tuned for that, friends. Um, yes, we're consumers. We can shop. Um, okay, Katie. Hi. If you have PMDD, how can you address both the pain and depression? I know about SSRIs, but is there anything that would treat both? Adrenal balancing. Your adrenal glands, when they're imbalanced, our neurotransmitters get all whacked out. PMDD is directly related to neurotransmitter imbalance, imbalances. I would actually test, and we do saliva and we do urine. I would test your neurotransmitter. Start there. You can start to see. Sometimes some of my, my patients need a little GABA. Maybe they need a little uh, dopamine. Maybe they need a little epinephrine and they need to balance their cortisol and they also need to support their adrenals. Um, so there's definitely a neuroendocrine connection between PMDD, and adrenals and neurotransmitters. So that would definitely be something that's root cause effective. Addressing the pain, you know, I'm all about my CBD for that for sure. Depression, omegas are really helpful. But at the end of the day, sometimes supplements and even foods um, are just, and I, I say this, I know people are going to freak out. I say this lightly, but not every case. Oh, you know what? Let me start my thing. Hold on. Let's see. Let's start. Okay. Yeah. So I'm filming this and I forgot 29 minutes. The thing dies. Um, so the, so this is what I say. You can't necessarily eat your way into uh, neurotransmitter or neuroendocrine balancing. There are some foods and some herbs and herbs are food. Um, but that isn't always the case. Sometimes we need a little bit more. And so um, for depression, omegas are great. Evening promose oil is great. I don't have, I would love to show you some of the things. Um, so that uh, definitely adaptogens can be very helpful. And there's definitely some connection there to, to the pain, because a lot of times what happens is you've got this pain loop happening. And so the body's registration of pain is not necessarily accurate to really the pain. And so this is this like phantomy type of pain, if that makes sense. Um, Isabel, hello, any suggestions for gastritis? Um, uh, so it kind of depends on what the cause for you tends to be. Gastritis could be a number of things. It could be GERD. It could be stomach lining imbalances. It could be parasitic pathogenic invasions. Um, have you had any methane or any of your kind of blow, uh, you know, the, the breathalyzer? It's not breathalyzer, but, you know, you kind of blow in and kind of see what gases are being produced by the stomach. That tends to be helpful. I kind of go with that because it, it's not just like, oh, don't eat red foods or spicy foods. It's a lot more than that. Stomach lining, big factor. Sometimes the duodenum might be imbalanced as well, or you've got valve dysfunction to the stomach. We have two valves in the stomach. Um, Lisette, what do you think about armor instead the synthetic medications? Actually, I have a lot of patients who do well on armor. Um, it kind of, it's glandular, so it kind of depends on each person. I know that a lot of naturopaths and functional medicine doctors will test people out on them. Generally, you're gonna feel it for sure at that three month mark. Um, okay. On me, please tell weight loss for hypothyroid. My medicate, my wedding is upcoming. Yay. And Lorianne, yes, we're having a wedding <laughs> March. And actually we might be having a little video. Uh, uh, I might have a videography for all of you to bring you into some experiences of the weddings. It's exciting. It's literally like a fairy tale wedding that we're we I'm putting on for, for our family. Um, it's fun. Gabriel's four, so he's going to be involved. So un me, uh, I totally understand your, your concern. So hypothyroid, you have to first get that balanced. I don't know how far away your wedding is, but the, um, you know, depending on if hypothyroid is accompanying autoimmunity, you might also find some benefits with eating kelp and, um, some iodine supplementation. Um, that tends to be really helpful, but 
Usually when there's a thyroid imbalance, the underlying factor is going to be cortisol in your adrenal glands. So that's huge. Um, Lorianne, what about IV B12? Um, so I, I know that it does, uh, you know, there are the cocktails and things like that. I find the kind of lipo, what we call lipo, like, you know, kind of trans, transmuscular or in the fat areas, fatty areas, tends to be a better assimilation. But then there's a lot of different types of, there are synthetic bees, which is probably another video that I should do down the road. Um, Annie, ever after, do you have any suggestions for things we can do to support our adrenals after a period of intense out of the norm stress? Yes, I actually have a whole video playlist about adrenals. That is really a big part of my focus. Um, many of you know I do lymphatics, so I'm a lymphatic therapist. And actually, I haven't officially announced this, but I am going to be in Germany in the summer um, taking a pretty extensive course. Um, it's like the Harvard, if you will, of lymphatics. It's the only hospital in Germany or in the world that caters to lymphatics. Um, so that's one area of my focus. And I'm really honing in on learning more European methodologies to bring to our US community and to all of you. Um, but I also really specialize in adrenal glands and um, adrenal health. Um, I have a book title that at some point when things slow down in my life, I will be writing a book about an exact case like, like Annie is suggesting. Um, it is not uncommon for you to go through craziness in life, divorce, death and family, your own you know, health crisis, whatever it is. And your, your adrenals sustain you. They get you through that. That's fight or flight. And then once you're through that, you're like, okay, I survived that. I'm all good. My hair's not falling out and feeling good. It's, that, is, that is like a state of shock. And then you get the kind of hit from that stress factor in three, usually six months after the fact. That's when it hits you. And that kind of impact is where you feel, you know, sl you slow down brain fog, hormonal imbalances, neurotransmitter imbalances. Um, so during those times are when I really, really go pro, pro uh, adaptogens. And actually there's a video coming out, I think tomorrow. I said, so it's either tomorrow or Thursday, but I, I, I'm sharing adaptogens. And actually, hold on, let me see. I think they're, I want to say, yep, they're on my desk. Yay. Um, let me show you. Up. So there, there are like powder, powdered adaptogens. Actually, elderberry is considered an adaptogen. Um, but let me also show you. Hold on. Because that video for you tomorrow or tomorrow or Thursday, one of the days, um, is going to be extremely powerful. Um, so I highlight like lion's mane and I pull all the research because these are all heavily researched chaga. That's something I was talking about. That organism, highest antioxidant value, awesome stuff. So um, adaptogens for sure, but you might be at a point and it's not a bad idea to test your cortisol um, because that's going to tell us um, a lot of times the poles of too high or too low cortisol. So, uh, you know, revving, like your engine is revving is high, high blood sugar spikes, you know, dips and blood sugar, can't sleep, insomnia. A lot of those symptoms of the high also mirror the low. So we have to quantify and, and dig in and get more details and more data. But the one interesting thing is that um, what we see is that if you, you, you may need, um, you, you might actually need um, um, a glandular. So there, there are a lot, actually I was on the, I had a conference call with one of my main manufacturers. If you guys use Cortisol Manager, I was talking with them, um, that brand um, earlier today, and they've actually rolled out a, an allergy free one because we've had some folks that have had some challenges. Um, so you might need more assistance if you will, but um, the adrenal is actually, I can fix adrenals. I've had my own bouts of adrenal imbalances. Um, and, uh, you know, you can really rock them and your body will sustain um, itself. The, the ripple effect of that stress factors into your progesterone and your testosterone levels because 
when the body, especially when it's in that fight or flight and you're either fighting or flighting or both or emotionally eating at night because that's how you deal with stress or like in my case, I just stop eating. My appetite completely decreases. Neither of those two are healthy, but it's how we survive. And everybody has a different kind of survival mechanism. Some of it's genetic or genetically oriented in our habits. Um, but what happens is the aftermath is where um, it, it, it hits you so hard that the impact is your body starts to use other hormones. So it'll burn up progesterone for men it'll burn up or convert testosterone. So that's really, really big when we look at imbalances because a lot of times you think, okay, I need my reproductive hormones balance or, oh, I need my thyroid balance, which you do. But beneath that, the underlying puppeteer are your adrenal glands. And so that's really where my practice, I mean, it became very, very obvious straight out when I started practicing in 2007 that I needed to hone in on the adrenals because I can help you fix your, your, I can put a patch on your hormones, but at the end of the day, if I'm not addressing that core, it's like the core of, you know, a, a, an onion. Um, you've got to peel back some of those layers, get to that core and the layers balance out. So um, I hope that was helpful. Let's see. Okay. Diesel Max. Hey, I must thank you for your information about using CBD on my thyroid gland. I use product from bare coconut. It's changed a lot. Thyroids. Yay. Thyroids working better. Woohoo. Your thyroid's happy. We love happy thyroids. Blitz and glitz. Oh, I love that. Is there a vitamin that removes calcium from the breast? Excellent question. So I actually detail this, um, in great detail in my healthy booby care course. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen that. I really haven't done a really good, uh, degree of like advertising or marketing it, but I put together, a culmination of all of my lymphatics and my nutrition and my hormonal focus and basically built a 26 um, video slash audio. So there's videos and they've all been translated into audio. So you can be on the go. You don't have to look at me. Um, but I, I do tutorials. I break out like supplements to use. I talk about calcifications, fibroids, how to reduce that. And women are having changes to the breast tissue. Like I give women warnings that they uh, might actually drop some cup sizes because of the swelling and the decrease of the excess tissue and the inflammation. And you can have an inflamed breast condition and that can be very, very challenging for a lot of women. So um, as far as vitamins go, uh, there's not like one single one, there's kind of a symbiosis of multiple. Um, okay, so Robert, you're welcome. Sue S, hi doctor, thank you so much, you're the best. Oh, how do I spell chaga? It's C H. Chaga is spelled C H. I don't know if this is backwards, but C H A G A. Chaga. All right. So, June, you had foot surgery two months ago. Now, my foot is badly swelling. I've been doing the dry brushing, wearing compression socks, and taking ginger. My doctor put me on prednisone. Any suggestions? So, well, the challenge with foot surgeries is that there's going to be a degree of tissue um, trauma and where there's trauma, there's inflammation. That's normal. It is normal to have swelling. Um, I don't know how bad it is. And depending on your case, it's not uncommon also, and I'm not diagnosing this by any means, but it's not uncommon for surgery to kick off edema or lymphedema as well. So the feet are really tough. Um, but I, you're still, you're still right out of surgery. So I wouldn't be too concerned. It's at that like four to six month mark that I would be a little concerned. And I don't know what compression you're doing, but I definitely recommend check out my lymph DIY, uh, videos. I do tutorials. I've got a cupping uh, tutorial that I'm going to be shooting. I'm going to try to shoot that this weekend. Um, all right. So let's see here. I scrolled down. Whoops. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, Lexi. Hey, I have Polly. Myalgia, rheumatica, PMR, so painful. Anything that can help the pain. CBD, CBD. I can't talk about it here on YouTube, but it is good stuff. Um, Violet and Melon, any advice on POI and HRT? I was diagnosed in August. It started combi patch. All the info I'm reading is contradictory and I'm a little scared, honestly. Thyroid removed about 15 years ago. So the big question I would ask, do you have a parathyroid or parathyroids? We have a pair, usually pairs. Um, 
and uh, be curious what specific. So that's really, I'd have to go really specific. Um, so I can't necessarily give you a full answer, but adrenals, support your adrenals with that thyroid gland um, out. I definitely do some liver detoxing because your liver is producing two key, actually three, but two primary, <coughs> very important thyroid hormones. So love your liver is my recommendation. Okay, let's see, Ritark. Hi, everybody. I, I'm loving all your thanks. Yay, I'm so excited to have all of you join me. Um, Lewis, can I have a shout out? Hey, Lewis, woo woo. <laughs> um, okay, so, all right, I've got Ritark77. Seven, seven. I have MS and sensitive to heat, but I'm experiencing hot flashes, I believe, due to menopause. What should I take to deal with this? Okay, I have a whole menopause series. First and foremost, grab the um, Ember Wave. They actually have a new color. It's rose gold. Um, I love rose gold. That's actually, for all you ladies who are loving wedding stuff, um, that's actually kind of the primary color um, scheme that we're going with. Um, but so Ember Lab, they actually have a temperature um, ceramic. It's a wristlet. So you wear it like bracelet, but it, it'll give you cold pulses and it pulses in different ways. They have a sleep mode. And then on the flip side for like me, I'm always running cold. Um, Florida girl <laughs> needs to be at 82 or above. Um, that is very helpful. And then FSOI for sure. FSOI all the way. Hi, Violet Mellon. It's so good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Um, you're having gallbladder pain after oh, starting HRT. Okay. Yes, dandelion tea, pa castor oil packs, any other advice? Add, okay, so what she's referencing, gallbladder, gallbladder pain after HRT. So there's definitely that hormone impact on the liver. Um, your liver might be not happy processing that out from the synthetic version. So see if there's a way to go more natural. Um, but milk thistle is a very good detoxifier. And then if you really need to up it, um, if you're like approaching gallbladder attacks, I would do coffee enemas. Um, and let me know if you guys want more on that. I do those very frequently. I don't really detail a whole lot, but they are fantastic. Um, okay. So Johnny P. Hey, Johnny, thanks for joining. My sodium salt intake is over the charts. What foods have low salt? Um, I weigh 191 and carry a fatty liver high blood pressure need to cut out salt. Okay. So magnesium rich foods, I would definitely add in uh, ginger turmeric. You want to get flushing. So very pro like kidney supportive. Um, there are definitely, there's probably some other um, things that I would look at for you, like liver balancing cortisol <clears throat> imbalances in cortisol can cause a fatty liver. That's where the body stores excess cortisol. It's where the body stores excess um, insulin <coughs> and can cause this insulin resistance. So I would totally go full on liver detoxing. Check with your doctor. So that's, I don't want to make um, a medical recommendation here, but that would be something that um, food wise, I love ginger and I, for sure, I would go magnesium powder. Um, and make sure you're getting a good multi-mineral because there's probably some mineral imbalances there. And if you're on high blood pressure medicine, it's not uncommon, like um, almod what is amlodipine. Um, there are two or three that can cause high sodium levels, though they can also skew potassium levels. So sometimes it's medically oriented um, and you can kind of, you know, circle out. A lot of doctors don't. I mean, this is another going back, like own your health and just go, I want to try something else because I've got swelling and it's awful. Um, you know, you deserve to stick up for yourself and you deserve your doctor to, to listen to you. You bought the selenium. Yay. Hey, Deb, your course is excellent. Yay. Going to watch it again and again. I was so glad. Thank you, Deb, for that commentary and affirmation. Taryn G, I had a partial hysterectomy. I have both ovaries, never took any hormone pills, but I think my hormones out of whack. What can I do? Any natural things? Yes. Seed cycling, uh, get your hormones tested. If you haven't, they should be testing them, especially after um, that type of drastic removal. I call it glandular amputation and organ, uh, organ amputation. That's really what it is. I think if we're being transparent, we should call it what it is. Um, and the body definitely, it gets, it goes into shock. Um, uh, Carm Cornelia, hi, just ordered some collagen. Yay. I actually have my collagen here. They have a vanilla. 
I'm in talks with them. So I'm, I'm trying to get them to sponsor one of my uh, recipe videos because my one collagen vendor that I love, she's not making it anymore. And they're really great. They have a vanilla. So stay tuned. I'm, I'm working with them. Uh, Lovelace, hey, can postmenopausal thickening <clears throat> of the uterine lining be anything besides uterine cancer? It can definitely be a sign of estrogen dominance. It can be a sign of liver imbalances. <coughs> um, it can be a sign of also, um, you know, kind of that endometrial imbalances. Um, it is not uncommon postmenopausal for that to happen. So I know it, it often we get scared into thinking, oh my gosh, it's cancer, because that tends to be like where our brains go. That's where mine goes. Um, but for sure, uh, endometrial tissue is very common. Actually, I have one of my, um, you know, when uh, when I was in St. Pete in Tampa, I I work with people. Sometimes I see them, you know, once a week, twice a week, three times a week. I become friends that are like family. And a lot of my good friends um, have been some of my patients that I worked with and healed. Um, and I feel blessed by that. And one of the things um, that has happened to one of my good friends. Uh, she's a cancer survivor. She's on tamoxifen. And that darn thing has caused her to develop endometrial tissue in her colon. She's had two or three colon surgeries. And now she's got the thickening of the endometrial uh, uterine lining. And she randomly has been bleeding. So she has, has had a lot of um, hormonal changes from the chemo and all the radiation. Um, and it went put her into early menopause. And yet, you know, there's a chemical uh, enhancement. So uh, it's crazy. Okay. So you guys, I've got to run. I've got to get my shot. And um, I am so excited that we are able to welcome our 250th um, or no, 200, what is it? 250,000. That is, that's like just so crazy. So I'm just going to do a quick little screen grab. We'll see. Uh, yep. We're at 250,002 of you. So Ah, this is so wonderful. It's a quarter of a million followers is just, it's mind blowing. And I really am honored and grateful. I can't say that enough. And I don't want to get all upset because I have been really good through vlogmas, but I really called to the, I feel called to this mission. Um, I feel like my own health issues are, are a guiding light for many of you. Um, and any way that I can help others, that's always been my mission. And I've always felt called to do that. So the format and forum of video is such a blessing. And each of you are blessings in my life. So I just want to thank you for all your support and encouragement and a viewership. And if any of you want to join the membership program, YouTube rolled that out. Um, just hit the join button. And I'm, I'm doing vlogs and behind the scenes and I actually post a video today of some video content I'm filming today. So um, you guys are so great. So thanks Diesel and Johnny and Annie and Lorianne and Lois and Cornelia and Violet. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces and a lot of new faces. For, so for all of you who watch on the replay, if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. To all of you who joined me here on the chat, thank you. And I may or may not see you on comments. So I wanna wish all of you a wonderful, happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy, um, Happy Hanukkah, Merry Kwanzaa, <laughs> uh, and Happy New Year. So I'm grateful. Mwah. All right, you guys, I will see you on tonight's video. I can tell you tonight's video is really exciting. I'm just finishing that up, just the editing in YouTube. So tonight I'm going to share a stocking stuffer gift guide. Um, that's always my fun one. And I'm going to share with you the coolest earrings that I have ever come across. And I'm excited because they're really great gifts. And you can even grab them for yourself. So super fun. So stay tuned for that video. I expect that'll probably hit 630. Um, so yes, thanks everybody. And yay, let's welcome our 250th and 250,000th and and number 250,001, 250,002 new subscribers. So thank you. See you guys on another video. Bye.